Hey. Hi, James. Hi, Chris. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you? It's good. It's very nice to meet you. Thanks so much for your time today. No, no. Well, thank you for your time, too. Yeah. Could you just tell me a bit about your background? I know, obviously, you previously worked at HBO. Just tell me a bit about your previous experience and then why you joined the Sequoia Group. Sure. It was uh, in 2012. I had been an executive at HBO for about uh, eight years. I was on the business side of things and I was responsible for all of our sort of ancillary products. So that was all of our licensing, uh, some of our promotional stuff, you know, working with home video at the time. I mean, we still had DVDs, you know, mm. when I joined the firm. So, you know, there was, a, you know, a whole host of that stuff. But we were primarily more of a domestic company at the time, and we really didn't have a lot of, uh, you know, work uh, internationally, particularly on our on our licensing side. So I was responsible for developing, you know, that whole uh, global engagement with partners around the world with our ancillary products. Uh, and then we were given the gift of Game of Thrones, you know, which, you know, really just, you know, was a game changer. Yeah. What was your involvement with that? How did you help um, bring that production through to Spain? Yeah, we realized, you know, we had a billion dollar brand on our hands as it related to sort of all the product extensions we could do. So we, we launched a full, you know, hired team, you know, went, went full steam ahead with creating, you know, all these luxury products, you know, that, that were the extensions of it, our luxury DVD packaging and all the extras that went along with that and then all the premium products. And so, you know, we, we built a huge brand, you know, we brought it around the world. We spent a lot of time in, in the UK, you know, working with our partners there and, you know, all of our local retailers and, and of course, HBO had an office at the time in, in the UK. And, and that was quite interesting for us of, of sort of what we would do around the world uh, from there. Um, and then Obama knocked on my door and, and, and he called me and, you know, because I had been involved in his campaign and a, a friend of his since 2008 um, and asked me to go to Spain. Um, funny story, though, is when my announcement came out in the press, came out, it said, you know, James Costas, executive vice president at HBO in charge of global licensing and et cetera, et cetera, promoted to be the US ambassador to Spain. And you know, all my colleagues called me up and they said, this is a joke, right? Like, this is the funniest thing we've ever seen, you know, in, in the announcements. And I'm like, it's actually true, you know? So, um, uh, you know, I ended up there. Um, and, and as it was, um, because I had been living in, in California for quite you know, some time, I had great relationships with all the studios. I knew a lot of the you know, major producers, you know, the heads of the studios, you know, in my social network more than anything. I mean, because mm -hmm. my role at HBO, as I said, wasn't, wasn't creative in terms of production. And I had a lot of good mentors you know, who gave me a lot of good advice. So, when I got to Spain, um, you know, it was early years for, you know, sort of the platforms and sort of all the studios, of course, had offices there. Um, and I was perceived to be the U.S. ambassador from Hollywood um, and, and came with, a, you know, a suitcase full of connections that we wanted to put to good use. You know, of course, we had to deal with our, you know, political relationships and our military relationships, but we had business relationships and trade. And then, of course, the entertainment sector was, you know, a huge, um, you know, part of that, you know, because of the relationships with all of our partners who had offices in Spain uh, and Europe. Um, and they were doing movie premieres and they were promoting. And, and so I got to know all the heads of the local, you know, divisions, uh, you know, who were set up there. Um, and, you know, we started to do our promotion, uh, you know, of the industry between both countries and, did a lot of trade delegations, bringing uh, Spanish producers and the Spanish film commissions back to the United States to meet with uh, their counterparts at the studios uh, so they could pitch Spain as a destination. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, we started, you know, HBO came in, Netflix followed, you know, Game of Thrones then came and started shooting in, you know, all around Spain. And, and that caused, created a lot of excitement, which we can talk about a little bit later as it related to the increase of, not only jobs, you know, in the sector, but all the secondary jobs from tourism and promotion, and you know, sort of all the attention that 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 Spain that the that the industry could could spotlight Spain as a location. And by the time I left in in 2016, end of you know, beginning of 2017, 
you know, I had welcomed, you know, the Netflix office that came in, you know, Ted Sarandos and Reed came and, and opened up, you know, the, the Netflix platform, you know, and, and, you know, Amazon followed it, of course, now everybody's there, um, you know, yeah. so it really is an incredible hotbed of, of activity. Um, and so when I left, because the transition, you know, from, from Obama to Trump was so rocky, um, yeah, that, yeah. you know, we wanted, and particularly me, wanted to really keep my connections, you know, with a country that I had fallen in love with. Of course, I knew it before, but I knew that there were people who depended on us and that there were relationships that probably weren't going to be served very well. So the Spain Film Commission uh, asked me to come on board as their honorary uh, ambassador uh, yeah. to help continue the bridge. And I, and I said, yeah, of course I'm gonna. I want to do this. You know, I I want to keep my 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 relationships fresh and and I want to be able to turn as much business as I possibly can over to Spain. And then I had a big event, you know, where we invited the heads of all the studios. So you know, we had you know J.J. Abrams and Ted Sarandos and sort of all these people came and and Sequoia, you know, approached me after that and said, hey, you know, we, we have this incredible facility. We've got this great relationship with Netflix. You know, we want to do more. Um, and we'd love for you to, you know, come on board, you know, as, as, as part of our, you know, sort of uh, growth strategy, particularly connecting to the US um, and getting more involved in, in co-promotions and, and, and sort of, you know, fictional development. Um, so I said, yes, of course, I was very interested in, in figuring out how to sort of formalize a relationship, you know, with a studio in Spain. So that was November, December, January, you know, February came around, we were finalizing our contract and then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, as you know, there was a complete another shutdown of, of all the productions, you know, everybody retrenched. Um, and Sequoia, of course, you know, uh, kept called me up and said, you know, we're, we're a little uneasy about the situation. And, you know, I think we want to put a pause on, on moving forward until we see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. I talked to Raul and Pablo, you know, at, at, the, at Sequoia and said, you know, I really think the time now is to put the gas on, that we really need to be, you know, fully engaged with everybody, you know, here in the U.S. to find out what's on their slate, what are they working on, how could we get involved in their co-productions and how could we also service them with our, you know, our facilities in Spain and our, 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 our creative services uh, with Drago, you know, not only in Spain, but Latin America. So um, we started, they said yes. And, and sort of, I finalized my deal with them. I think it was at the end of April or May, uh, quite early in, in the COVID cycle. Um, but I also kept my finger on the pulse with the Spain Film Commission and, and sort of, you know, said, you know, we should talk to the Spanish government um, about, you know, the COVID protocols that Sequoia had developed, of course, you know, for safe shooting. And I can talk about that a little bit later too. Um, but the Spain Film Commission, you know, I said, you know, let's go in and talk to the Minister of Industry and Economy and Culture and, and, and the President's office about the importance of looking at um, changing now the tax incentives in the country mm -hmm. because it could be built into part of their COVID relief structure. Um, yeah. And that would of course swing the pendulum, you know, you know, to Spain. It's deep as well, wasn't it? I mean, from 20 to 30%, I mean, that's- Yeah, quite, uh... so, you know, 30 to 30%, you know, and 50% and in the Canaries, but it was kind of like all of a sudden this Renaissance moment happened. Um, and, and that's kind of where we are now, you know, we're, we're just really looking at, uh, you know, sort of coming out, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Of course, you know, Spain is, is actively shooting now domestic productions, you know, TV and, and movies are fully up and running, you know, with very strong safety protocols that, that were actually designed by, by, by Sequoia um, that were adapted by, you know, sort of the country. Um, and now, of course, the internationals are, really, you know, poking around because they want to come, but the issue is obviously insurance. Uh, yeah. And I think a lot of the internationals just are, are not right ready to pull the trigger, you know, because they can't get the insurance they need. But hopefully by the summer next year, you know, we will have the vaccine, you know, which is beginning, beginning to roll out now and we should be back uh, in full up and running. So, uh, so your, your intention at this point is to obviously improve opportunities between Spain and the US, right? In terms of content production, production services on sort of Spanish, American and other international projects and obviously co-productions as well. I'm assuming that's your, your plan and goal for the next sort of few months, right? 
Yeah, I mean, it's multi-pronged. I mean, because, you know, we're at Sequoia, you know, Grupo Sequoia, you know, we're building out, you know, what's called Madrid Content City, uh, you yeah. know, which is this uh, big infrastructure program, which is about 20 minutes outside of the center of Madrid. Um, and we will have, um, uh, it's about 140,000 uh, square meters, you know, as, as a location. And we have there now five stages. We're, we're building another um, six. Uh, we have full pre and post uh, production facilities. We have food services. There's you know office space. There's parking. You know it's a, it's a full blown infrastructure to be you know sort of the crown jewel of you know of, of locations uh, you know in in Spain in Europe. Yeah, I was going to ask that. What's the latest with the construction phase? I mean, is that still continuing um, as planned despite yeah. COVID? Yeah, we've been, we've been, you know, obviously there's, there's restrictions, uh, you know, things did slow down, you know, right at the beginning, uh, you know, when COVID was happening, but towards the, you know, sort of the middle of summer, um, you know, people were learning, you know, construction became part of essential services, so they were allowed to continue to build. Um, and so we're moving full steam ahead with our project. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that, so that's the, that's the physical sort of, uh, you know, real estate comp component. But then, of course, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, how to, you know, extend our services, you know, to sort of as we have been doing for, for many years. Um, and then we do local production in Spain in the Spanish language, uh, yeah. you know, and we service all of the, you know, the local, you know, Antena Tres, TV3, you know, you know, all of those with unscripted, um, you know, 200, 250 hours of annual TV production, um, mostly, um, news, cooking shows, travel related uh, reality type things. Um, and of course now, you know, we're looking to do more in international uh, co-productions for the international market. Um, particularly, as you know, coming out of Spain with, you know, Casa de Papel, you know, which yeah. is shooting on our stages, uh, you know, for the global market and a latte and some of these other things that we, uh, you know, have on our sets. Um, there are 400 million Spanish speaking people in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's, you know, focused on, on sort of, you know, what can they produce, but we also want to have international projects. And so my role, you know, over the last six months is really building strategic uh, relationships and, and having high level conversations with all the US internationals about how uh, Sequoia Studios can participate in, in, in those developments of those projects. and. We have a guy now working for us uh, called David Martinez, who's the head of our yes. development. Uh, I was going to ask you about him, yeah. Yeah, really good slate of projects that we're in, in development right now. Can you elaborate a little further on what those projects are? There's a, you know, a good slate of, of projects that he's been working on with, uh, with a lot of international partners. Uh, and we're talking to sort of uh, all, the, all the platforms and studios about, uh, you know, obviously figuring out how we're going to sell these in. So he's helping to bring in US and, as you say, international projects from other countries as well into Spain. And, and how's, your, how's your partnership with Netflix working out in terms of obviously then taking over the studios and, and shooting a lot of, as you say, Spanish language projects there, which have proving very successful so far. I'm assuming they've got a slate of projects also lined up to shoot at the studios. Yeah, so of course, I mean, we have a long term relationship with them as it relates to the to the studio operations. Um, and, you know, now with with David Martinez on board, we're having conversations with them about, you know, of course, we can't do co productions with Netflix, but we can sell them projects. Uh, mm. So now we're having conversations with their team uh, based in Spain and also in Latin America. And then with me here in LA, you know, I have those conversations, you know, with their with their team here. Uh, so it's a, it's actually a nice, um, you know, sort of I guess we would call it a triad, you know, where we can triangulate, uh, you know, sort of uh, the relationships at, at sort of all the different levels. Okay, and will you also help sort of Spanish production companies pitch to global platforms and other potential U.S. partners? Because sometimes that's been a little bit lacking with certain, you know, companies and projects. Is that something you're going to assist with? Well, you know, through my role, it's because I still am sort of working with the Spain Film Commission. And of course, you know, we always like to say, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, a rising tide floats all boats, right? So, yeah, yeah. of course, you know, I have a responsibility as an executive at Sequoia 
to first and foremost promote you know our facilities and and first and foremost you know look at you know opportunities for us to be involved in in co-productions but of course you know we want to support the entire industry so you know as a matter of fact just last week um, we did a virtual um, uh, a virtual um, webinar uh, with the Spain Film Commission um, with two uh, Spanish producers um, and we invited all the US uh, producers to, to join in to, for the Spaniards to talk about how they're actually shooting very safely now in Spain. Um, so, you know, we want to help, you know, everybody. I mean, the sector is important. Um, and so I think there's enough room for us, you know, at Sequoia to, to sort of be the leader, I think, you know, in the promotion uh, you know, of the sector, you know, with the crown jewel of Madrid content city. Um, and of course, with our own service company, which is called Drago, which we can service, you know, other, you know, and we have in the past, you know, international productions, um, but also to help promote, you know, uh, all the other, you know, major, you know, uh, you know, service companies and producers in the country, because, you know, it's not only the US that's looking towards Spain, it's, it's, of course, you know, the UK, um, yeah, yeah. We want that business. Um, mm. And of course, we're now competitive with all the other countries because of the incentives. So, um, and I think Spain does it the best. I mean, you know, as I said, you know, incredibly diverse locations, you know, great weather all year round, um, rule of law, uh, you know, incredibly great talent, uh, an incredible infrastructure of transportation, uh, you know, not only in, in the country, I mean, with the fast train and the ability to move productions from the Canary Islands, you know, if they need that to Mallorca, to Andalusia. Um, yeah. And then of course, you know, the international market, you know, from, from yeah, Spain. Yeah. So what are your sort of plans for the next sort of few months then? And, and how much are they being limited by COVID? Well, you know, listen, I think that, you know, we're very excited about, you know, once again, attracting as much business as we can to Spain. Um, yeah. You know, I know, you know, of course, with Brexit, uh, you know, we've seen, you know, a migration of, of, of companies, not only within the sector, but of course, you know, in the financial sector, you know, who are looking to relocate their their offices and, you know, they're still a business, of course, in the UK, but they're moving their passports to, to different places. I know Ireland has been, you know, quite successful in attracting yeah. some of that business. And, and I think Spain, you know, competes, you know, of course, with that. So, you know, we really want to be able to highlight to, you know, international producers, particularly, you know, in, in Britain, uh, you know, the benefits of, of looking at Spain, uh, you know, and relocating, you know, some of that business to, you know, to the Spanish market, you know, just as I said, you know, all the reasons, you know, why it makes sense for people to have a subsidy, you know, in, in the market, um, you know, and the fact that Brits love Spain, you know, I mean, it, it's the most visited tourist destination. I think it's, it's one of the high, you know, top uh, uh, investment destinations for, you know, for, for Brits, uh, you know, and, and then Spain still being part of the EU, gives everybody the access, you know, of course, to the European market, which is, you know, 500 million people, and then the access to North Africa, you know, yeah. Middle East, uh, you know, and then, of course, the relationships with the United States. And what about yourself in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously, you're, you're based in, in America, but you, you flip between Madrid and, and, and the headquarters in, in, in America. So just tell me a bit about how that works. And obviously, the headquarters itself in, in LA and, and, and uh, the setup and structure there. And what you're trying to do between Spain and, and, and the US? So, you know, obviously, because this all happened once again within COVID, um, mm. you know, I, I used to travel, you know, for, for speaking for me first, um, I have a couple of other interests in Spain. I'm on the board of a publicly listed company there. Um, I kept an apartment uh, in Madrid. Uh, so, you know, after I left the embassy, you know, we, we set up a uh, you know, uh, an apartment uh, there, which is, uh, you know, sort of my home base when I come to Europe. Uh, and I would come usually every six to eight weeks uh, and spend time in Madrid, uh, you know, keeping my relationships alive, particularly in this sector. Um, but because of COVID, of course, you know, my, my travel has been, you know, incredibly reduced. I, I actually made it to Spain once uh, in, in August, uh, just for about a week. Uh, to actually go out to the studio in Tres Cantos to see how the construction uh, was coming along for phase two and phase three. Um, I wanted to get my eyeballs on it so I could actually have a conversation with our team at Netflix about James, how- James, could you just explain briefly what phase two and phase three are just for our readers and listeners, just so they know? Sure. 
Yeah. So, so phase one, you know, was was the completion of, of the five stages, you know, with the pre and post production facilities and, and a, a number of warehouses. Um, phase two is is the second, uh, you know, construction of, of the next five stages, uh, and then more warehouses. And, and when, uh, when's that due to be completed? Uh, we'll be done by 2022. Uh, so, you know, we, we've been in the phase two. Yeah, phase two. And then phase three follows shortly thereafter. And, and that's already mapped out and, and you know, ground is, is being prepared for that. And that'll be, you know, a couple of office towers. Uh, and that includes the food court and services for all of the facilities that will be, you know, in our protected facility because of security. So, you know, we have high levels of security, you know, in the region. I mean, not that you need it, but, you know, to protect IP and, you know, of, of course, employees. And, and then, you know, just outside of that is, you know, housing is going up in the region because Trace Cantos is looking at, you know, seeing all the people that we're bringing in and, and they're going to be needing housing and, and facilities for them. Uh, the Ave actually is one stop from Madrid, uh, you know, which is great. And by car, it's, it's 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so, so, you know, my, my time, you know, what, what, on that trip was really just to sort of get an eyeball on it. Of course, I'm looking at it visually all the time on, on camera, but I wanted to actually walk the property and see how things were going. Um, and so, you know, what we have set up here in the States is, you know, I've identified office space. Um, we haven't moved into anything yet because of COVID and, you know, there's no sense in risking, you know, pulling a lease right now until we actually can actually move forward. So, you know, we have, uh, you know, someone that we were hiring who was going to be responsible for um, the, being the bridge of all the physical production, uh, basically talking to, you know, not only, uh, you know, for, you know, for us, but, you know, also for Spain, to see, you know, what's on everybody's docket uh, and how we can service them, uh, you know, in, when they come to Spain, either through Drago or through, you know, Palma or, you know, all of our friends, you know, at, at all the other production companies in Spain. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're, you know, with David Martinez, um, you know, you know, we're looking at having a creative development person who can be on the ground here in LA, uh, who will also be that bridge, you know, who can, you know, sort of translate, because, you know, listen, I, I'm not a, 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 you know, like I said, I, I don't purport to be a creative development executive. I mean, I think I have good taste, but we, we need people who can actually do the development work on that. So, so that'll be sort of the infrastructure of our US office, uh, but we'll pull the trigger on that, hopefully. Uh, you know, as, as we can begin to actually go back out in the world uh, and set up an office in Beverly Hills. Great. And, and how big is the, the company and team, I mean, obviously on both sides, Spain and in LA at the moment? Well, you know, we employ 1,500 people, you know, around the world. I mean, and, and a lot of that infrastructure is based in, in Madrid and then in, in Latin America, which is, you know, we're in Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Um, and then in the United States, it, it'll be a small team of, you know, less than five people. Um, what's, yeah. what's the structure in, in the other countries, the Latin American countries there? I mean, what, what companies and sort of setup do you have there? Yeah, so in Latin America, it's, it's quite similar, I mean, to what we have in, 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 in Madrid, except we don't have physical space there in terms of stages, right. but we have production services uh, that we offer to, you know, to the market. Uh, so we have uh, teams on the ground there who can service all uh, local uh, productions and internationals that are coming into the space. Is the plan to build studios in those countries? It's a little early, you know, to, to say that. I mean, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we're quite content with, you know, the, the massive infrastructure that we have uh, in Spain uh, at this point. Um, and as I said, we're, you know, we're, we have closed, you know, what we what we will look like with phase three. Um, I know that Raul, you know, Bardenas and, and, and Pablo Jimeno, you know, are always thinking about, you know, what's next, uh, because I think that what they have achieved is that they have proven that they can not only, uh, you know, be a real estate company, but also be the operators of premium services and stages. Um, and that's kind of a unique thing, because I think you get a lot of people who think that they can, you know, Get a, get a big space, uh, you know, get some private equity, um, and then just, you know, sort of turn it over to 
a platform or, you know, or try to rent them out. But if you don't have the capabilities on the ground, how to actually operate that for, yeah. you know, your client, um, things aren't going to go well. So, you know, we have a committed team who understands the operation of, of what, you know, particularly in this case, Netflix, you know, who are on, you know, taking five of our stages right now, uh, you know, for a long-term commitment need from us as a partner, because, you know, we have to be there for them every day on how mm -hmm. we operate the facility for them and how we work with them, uh, you know, with their, with their talent and, and uh, you know, and servicing them on pre and post. So are they, you said they're taking over five sound stages uh, for a long period. Are they potentially going to be using them for the entire period? Have they got projects lined up or could they potentially, or could you potentially rent out the space to other production companies that are looking to shoot in, in the studios? Yeah, I mean, you know, w the commitment we have right now, I mean, obviously is that the, the, the initial five and, and, and you know, what's coming next will we'll sort of, uh, you know, can't get into too many details of, of, of who will be occupying those spaces moving forward. Um, but the idea, you know, is, is really, you know, is Netflix to be our, our, our premium partner, um, you know, and that's what they are right now with, with this commitment we have on the first five. Um, and, and of course, you know, what they have in, in their, in their, you know, pipeline, uh, you know, is, is massive, uh, you know, uh, you know, the team on the ground is, I think, you know, looks at, you know, what the pipeline is, and then they look at where they can make these things, right? So, you know, not only, you know, is Spain, you know, in the, in the market, um, oops, sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, not only is Spain, you know, in competition for that business, but, you know, of course, you know, the rest of the world, you know, is, is looking to do business with the platforms. But as I said, everything was booked already. So, you know, Spain is yeah. I think, having this renaissance moment, you know, right now because of everything that we talked about earlier with the incentives and, and the building of new, new sets and the sophistication of the market, you know, and, and I think there's going to be some consolidation as well as it relates to the studio services businesses, because, you know, there's some great ones, you know, in the country, you know, I mean, and you know who the players are, you know, from, from, you know, all, you know, all of the, the, you know, the, the major ones, but I think there's, there's, there's room for more and, and more people are coming in and looking for, for different, uh, you know, levels. It was always interesting to me when, when I would talk when I was at the embassy, when when people were saying, "Oh, well, you know, everybody's coming for Game of Thrones," um, but you know, so when some of the talent came over and I would meet them, they would say, "We love coming here because we can bring our family." You know, like yeah. you know, we don't if we have to go to another country in, in Eastern Europe. You know, we don't bring anybody with us because you know that you know we can't send our kids to the beach. You know, we we can't let our wives go out into town, and you know, there's great restaurants and shopping, and and so you know, I, I think that you know, if we can continue to present, you know, Sequoia Studios and Spain as a first class premium destination, I think there's a lot more room for 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 other players to come into the market or even us to look at sort of expanding, you know, our, our, our physical footprint, uh, you know, maybe not in Madrid, but, you know, I think that we could look at other regions, you know, in Spain, of course, you know, if we look to the South um, and then, you know, obviously the islands. So um, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, the, the crew in particular are also very strong, aren't they? They've, they've, because they've worked on so many projects, both local and international, they've got that experience now that, so when the US projects or UK projects come over, they know they can rely on those you know, crew members, even up to you know, heads of department, as they have done on like the Crown and various others, because they know that they are so strong, aren't they? That there is that yeah. strength and depth as well. Yeah, listen, they're highly educated. I mean, you know, of course, you know, in Spain, you know, that, that you know, the education system, you know, is open and there's universities and, and opportunities for people to study and be, you know, incredibly talent versed in their in their in their field of study but also because they have worked with so many international productions that they, they, you know, I mean, they not only speak the language, but they actually know how to, to shortcut the, you know, they know their jobs. So, yeah. you know, I was working with, you know, with the guys at Game of Thrones and they were working with Peter Welter at Fresco, you know, they were, they, you know, Dan and David, who were the showrunners said to me, this is the best place in the world to work. Like, I mean, once again, the talent, you know, who service them, you know, the fact that, you know, that, that Peter Welter was able to work with, you know, with the production and, and work through, you know, visa issues, labor issues, 
permitting, you know, getting all of those, you know, the, the, the crews lined up at the highest levels, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, not only all the extras, I mean, thousands of people who they needed, you know, that they were able yeah, yeah. to, I mean, and Peter, you know, did that, you know, as a one stop, you know, he, he, you know, he was, you know, you know, so, so they're already, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's all there. Um, yeah, very much so. And so what's your, going forward, what's your balance going to be in terms of between servicing and production? And will you be looking at sort of Spanish language projects, obviously, but also English language projects? You, I mean, I, know in, I think it was Criminal UK filmed at your studios, you know, the Netflix show. So there's obviously a balance there, isn't there, between the two? Yeah. No, listen, I, I think that, you know, Raul and Pablo have, you know, they, they don't want to be everywhere. Um, and, and I think that they would like to really look at how we can build a library you know, over the course of time with our own IP, um, you know, and be involved in co-productions with, you know, with some major, you know, producers, you know, from the US, um, you know, of course, you know, we're looking at English language, you know, I think that, you know, this is something that's important, you know, to us that, that but, but things that we can also not only shoot in Spain, I mean, you know, at Sequoia Studios, you know, I would co-finance a project that was shot here in the States, uh, you know, I mean, it necessarily doesn't have to be something from us from a creative angle that that we need to shoot, you know, in Spain and not necessarily even using our services. I mean, you know, we we are happy, uh, you know, to find and identify a project. But but I think we also just need to be very clear, you know, what our creative vision is. Right. Like, so I don't want to come out of the box, which is why I didn't want to talk about the slate yet. Uh, in terms of, you know, what our creative, you know, vision is, right? Like, I think it's really important that we are not everywhere, that we have a, you know, I think a nice, uh, you know, uh, sort of vision of, of what we want to, you know, co-produce and be involved in. Um, and I think particularly for me, you know, I, I really do want, you know, it to be projects that do uh, emanate from Spain. Uh, because mm. there is there is great things that we can show the world from Spain, mm. you know. So I've got a couple of interesting projects. I mean, we, you know, David is working on them. Uh, one of them is very historical. Uh, that takes you from you know a, a, the time in Franco to current day. Uh, that will highlight you know sort of Spain in the past and Spain today. Uh, so those are the things I think that I would like us to is be. Is that going to be U.S. Spanish co-production then, or is it? It's going to be multinational, um, you know, so, you know, we've got a couple of different players, I think, as, as you know, that was also very important for financing, uh, you know, in order to figure out how to spread, you know, the risk. Um, but I, you know, I think that that's really sort of what we're looking at, because, you know, we are at the end of the day, a Spanish company. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that we do, you know, and, and, and of course, I Raul and probably would probably say, we're an international company, and I totally agree with that, but we emanate from Spain. Um, and, and I think that, you know, they're proud Spaniards, you know, and, and we all feel that sense of pride. Um, so I, I think it would be nice for us to be known uh, for some projects that do help highlight that. And realistically, I mean, obviously, you say you've got these projects you're looking to work on. When do you think they can start shooting? I mean, obviously, with COVID causing problems, do you think that projects are going to start up again from early next year or you, you I think you mentioned before maybe the summer or yeah yeah no listen like I said um, in, in in Spain right now you know not only you know with us but you know we're back on stage at, at, at Sequoia with with Casa de Papel uh, there's a couple of other projects that are being shot right now there has not been one incident of any uh, protocol that has that has been uh, that hasn't broken any sort of safety issues. You know, no one's gotten sick. Uh, they're shooting all across Spain on stages uh, and, and on locations. Uh, David Goyer actually, you know, is shooting that the Apple show, I think it's foundation in the Canary Islands that they just wrapped, uh, you know, actually during COVID. Um, yeah. So I think that's the only international that's there. Um, but, but domestically, you know, we're full on. Um, we actually, I, I should mention, uh, we actually have a film division. Uh, there's a producer that we work with uh, in-house uh, and he's also independent. Uh, is, his name is Eduardo Campoy. Uh, he's actually shooting a, a movie uh, that they're just wrapping up in the Canary Islands as well. It's a, it's a local movie, the Spanish market. Um, so I think that, you know, listen, we're trying to show a sense of confidence to the world. Uh, that Spain will be ready, uh, you know, as the vaccines are being deployed. 
I, I really do feel like that will quickly change. I, I was very impressed that, you know, it was actually in, in at the beginning of April that Sequoia, you know, had put together their plan on all the safety shootings. I don't know if you've seen it, I'm happy to send it to you, Thanks but there, it, yeah. was, it was an incredible document that I actually then sent to um, the MPA uh, and shared it with our American friends. And I said, look at what we've done in Spain, you know, what Sequoia has put forward. And they looked at it and they said, this is really ahead of, of some of the other countries, you know, in Europe. And mm. there were practical things there that they adapted, uh, you know, and adopted for, for their protocols. So, um, you know, listen, I, I think it's all there. The, the ingredients are, you know, have made people confident. The shooting is happening. There are no cases, you know, on, you know, the, on sets that have proven that, that we have been part of, you know, any spreading of the virus, um, you know, so, uh, you know, I feel, you know, listen, I don't want to, I always hate putting a timeline on it because it always comes back to haunt you if someone says, well, you said we could shoot in April. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel that I think by, by, by late spring, uh, you're going to see, you know, obviously the, the international is really wanting to get these things on sets because, you know, listen, I mean, the, you know, with the streamers, you know, the, they need more. Yeah, and, fingers crossed and good luck. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you yeah. know, thank you so much. And I'll look forward to any follow up that may happen. Don't hesitate to reach out. Will do. Thanks All very right. much. All right. Take thank care. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.